Hi, I'm Jo from JH Leather, and I've been asked a few times now how to create slanted stitch lines for use of digital patterns in Adobe Illustrator, and that is what we're going to be going over today. So first of all, we need to open up Adobe Illustrator and get a new document. Now you can set the unit when you choose your file. However, if you've missed that point, you can go up to properties and then on the units, we're just gonna go to millimeters. Now for this, we are just gonna be making some just coasters uh, as that's just a quite a nice, easy, simple thing to sort of get started with, with doing this sort of pattern on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the rectangle tool and then we're gonna click once and we'll get the rectangle box come up and we're just going to put in 100 by 100 and then we hit return and then we've got a rectangle. Now we want to just move this to one side and we're just going to remove the fill from this because you don't need that and we're going to make two so we're going to hold or oh, select our square and then hold the alt button and drag that down so we now have two and on this second one we are going to add some rounded corners so you can just grab the corners here you can see these circle dots have come up and we can just pull them in and then we can also double click on them and you can get it in this transform box and we're just gonna put 10 millimeters because that's quite a nice one to do and then we have our two rectangles to start with so what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the blend tool to create the actual stitch marks on this so for that we have to do a couple of things so to set up our boxes or our patterns to have the sort of stitch lines marked onto them, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over, or we're gonna select them and then head over to the offset path. And we're actually gonna put down minus 3.5 millimeters. Now, when we apply our stitches to our shape, what it's gonna do is gonna align the middles of the stitches to our sort of line. So we're gonna move that in because we want our stitch line or I like to have my stitch line at about three millimeters. But if we move it in by an extra half a millimeter at this stage, once we have our stitches applied, we will actually have the tops of them at three millimeters. Now, that might sound a bit confusing now, but just bear with me on this. So we're gonna set both of this on, so we're gonna do this on both of our pieces. So we now got two or a square within a square going on. So that's that bit set up. Now to create our actual stitches, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the line tool and then we're just gonna click on our page and we want a two millimeter line as I find that's the best sort of option from doing this. We're gonna want it at a 45 degree angle and then we're gonna hit okay. And then what we're gonna do is actually duplicate this stitch. So we're gonna select it and then press hold and hold alt. And we're also gonna press shift because that's gonna keep it on the same sort of axis as the first one. And we're just gonna drag that over a bit. So we've got a nice bit of room between them. So we should now have two stitches. What we're gonna do is highlight them both. And then we're gonna go over to this blend tool. And we're gonna click on that once. And then we're gonna click one time on each of the two stitches that we have marked out. And then we're, that's going to basically fill the void between these two bits. Now, that's obviously not at the size that we need. So what we're gonna do then is double click on the blend tool, and then we get this option box come up. And what we want to do is in the drop down box, we want specified distances because we want, this is where we're gonna put in our stitch mark size. Now for mine, I'm going to use 3.38 millimeters because that's the size of the iron that I use most commonly here in the workshop. And then we're going to press, now this is very important, we got on orientation, we need to press align to path. This is a very important option. And I like to have my preview on here so I can see what the outcome is, but you can set this to whatever you want. So 3.38 is what I'm using and we're going to make sure we have align to path. Then we can press okay. So you can see here, we now have a line of stitches. So we can just duplicate that and put that to one side. And now what I'm going to do is actually drop the stroke down a bit. So I'm just gonna drop that down to 0.5 PT because at the moment, at one, it's a bit thick for my liking. So that is the setup that we need. So we've got our stitch lines or our pattern for our stitches and we have something for them to follow. 
Now, to set this up, what we need to do is actually break the path so it's an open sort of path rather than having it as a fixed path. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select on this uh, squared first, and then we're gonna go over to the eraser and we're gonna right click and we're gonna bring up our scissor options. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click in the corner and we're just gonna break that. And then we can do the same anywhere on our rounded shape as well. And that just opens the path so we can actually apply the stitch lines to that. So now we are ready to actually apply the stitches to our sort of lines as it were. So we're gonna select one of our set of stitches and we're gonna select our square, square to start with. And then we're gonna go up to object. We're gonna come down to blend and then replace spline. And boom, you can see already that that has now applied that to our shape. And you can go in if you need to at this point and you can double click on your blend tool again and change the differences. If you wanted them to be three millimeters, you can do, and that will update it as we go. So I'm going to change that back to 3.38. We just want to duplicate that again, just so we have a spare one. So we've got the two selected, head up to object, blend, replace spline, and voila. Now, what I'm gonna show you is if we head back to our blend tool and the options. So this is what I mean about the orientation. So this is aligned to path. So the stitches are gonna follow the path. If we have the aligned to page selected, you can see our stitches go off and do something a bit funky, which we don't really want. Because uh, our stitches are, but that's not right. So we, that's the way we need to make sure that we have aligned to path and this is going to work on pretty much any shape by having it aligned to the path so that's fine now if we have a look at these you can see this bottom one looks pretty good so I'm quite happy with that and I'm going to now leave that for the moment but this top square one we got a few funky things going on here that is less than ideal. So what I'm going to do is just going to delete that and then we'll just put in another offset path just to replace it. And what we're going to do with a square. So basically what the sort of blending to the spline is going to do, it's going to apply the thing around the whole of the shape. And because this is a square, it's got a fixed start and end points, sort of obviously in the corners. Now, what we can do to make that better than what it was, oh, if I, rather than deleting it, we'll just move that over to one side so we can show them together later on. So what I'm gonna do is basically apply, I'm gonna break the shape up into four pieces. So we're gonna have the top, bottom, left and right. And we're gonna apply the, or we're gonna apply the stitches to each line individually. And that's gonna give us a better outcome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate our stitches a few times. So we need at least four for this. So if we have five available, just in case we need a spare one. And then we're gonna hit and select our square, square. <laughs> and with the scissors, we're gonna break the shape and we're gonna do it at each of these individual anchor points. So we're basically gonna break it up into four pieces. So we're gonna have four lines. And then we can just individually select them, object, blend, place spline. And we're gonna do that on each Right, so we now have our stitch marks going all the way around our square. Now, the eagle-eyed among you may realize that some of them are actually now facing the wrong direction. So if I bring our original one over, you can see across the top and the bottom, it's absolutely fine. But our stitch lines going down the verticals are currently facing the wrong way. So what we're gonna do is just flip them around. So we're gonna click on them, have them selected, and then right click and head down to transform. And then we're gonna go and hit reflect and we're going to reflect it on the vertical and I like to have the preview one so I can see what I'm doing and that looks good to me so we're going to click OK and then we're going to do the same on the other one boom so you can see now we've got crosses in the corners so that is each of them are lining up and if I bring this one over you can sort of see the difference here um, between the two so yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. And this is what I have been using uh, recently when doing my designs. Now, one thing to note is that as, obviously this is a computer program, what it's going to do is it might 
depending on your stitch size and the size or length of the path that you are wanting to blend. It might make micro adjustments on each of our individual stitches to make sure that they actually fit within sort of the specified area. So that is something to point out. Now it's not, I don't find that too much of a problem for me, but it might be an issue for you. I, I'm not sure, but that is something that you're gonna to need to take into account. And so the stitches may be a little bit shorter or longer. It's gonna be like fractions. It's not gonna to be too much, but it will be slightly narrower or larger than your pricking irons. So that is something to note. And like I said, I haven't had a problem with this, but it might be a deal breaker for you. And I haven't currently found a way around changing that yet, unless you go into the maths behind it all and actually work out the sizes that you actually need. However, like I said, this works really well for me and I will now show you what I was talking about earlier in terms of by setting our offset to 3.5, how our stitches, the tops of them are gonna be at three millimeters. So we'll just do it on this top square. we we'll just select, come on mouse, select top one, offset pass, minus three, push. And you can see, look how neat that is. So they are touching right at the top of that line. And that is how I personally like to do my stitch marking. Now you might prefer yours differently, and if you want the middle of your stitches to be at that three millimeter line, that is absolutely fine. It's down to you. But by using this process, uh, you will be able to get your slanted stitch marks onto your other projects. And now what I would do now is print this off and do, as a test, and then we can actually mark that against our pricking irons. And you can do this for any size iron that you have. Okay, so now we've done that and now tests come out pretty well. I'm really happy with the results from that. So that is my method for adding stitch marks to digital patterns within Adobe Illustrator. And you can use this method for pretty much any shape. Just remember that you need to make the pattern open path by using the scissors tool. Now, if you are planning on using this method for laser cutting files, what you need to do is make sure you change the color of your stitch marks so that you can rearrange them when it comes to the cutting process because you want to make sure that the stitch marks will be cut before the exterior of your product because else it's camping up and we don't want that. So yeah, I think that's everything you need to know. Now, if you do have any questions, please leave a comment below and I will try my best to answer them. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials. And I will see you in the next video.